Hello and a very warm welcome. You're watching this week's edition of the Political Stock Exchange. On the PSE this week, we will get you the state of play in Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. The EC has announced the poll schedule for these key battleground states in the Hindi heartland. Which party has its nose in front? Who's trailing? How is the election being set up in these three crucial election-bound states? The results of the Sea Voter Opinion Poll tracking data for Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh coming up on this week's edition of the Political Stock Exchange. poll season begins. Who has the edge? BJP to dethrone Gelot in Rajasthan. Which Kamal will bloom in Madhya Pradesh? Can Bagel spend Chhattisgarh? Opinion poll, political stock exchange, big focus on news track. Over the next 45 minutes, I will get you the results of the Sea Water opinion poll for Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, and Chhattisgarh. These are the three key Hindi heartland states where elections will be held in November. Results out on the 3rd of December. I want to take you through the methodology employed by Sea Voter for Rajasthan. That's the first state we'll take on our screen. This uh, round of sampling was done by Sea Voter between the 1st of September and the 8th of October. It has a sample size of 30,044 voters. Uh, all the 200 Vidhan Sabha constituencies of Rajasthan have been covered. This is a catty poll, which means it's a telephonic poll, it's not face-to-face. -face. So do bear that in mind as you take a look at the results. I want to introduce also our guests joining us for the show, starting with the lead cephologist at Sea Water, Yashwan Deshmukh. Uh, his one-time contemporary, now politician, GVL Narsimha Rao, joins us on this broadcast as a member of parliament and spokesperson of the Bharatiya Janata Party, squaring off against him, Dr. Sayyad Nasir Hussain, member of parliament, national spokesperson of the Congress. And we have Amitabh Tiwari, political analyst and columnist, joining us as well. Let me take you through the projections for vote share in Rajasthan. Remember, this is where the BJP has announced that it will go in without projecting a chief ministerial face. They're also saying that Vasundra Rajay will not be given the kind of centre stage that she had in the past few elections. Uh, Ashok Gailoth has a record of uh, just seeing his party's vote share crash after five years of being in power. So what does the Rajasthan vote share look like? The Congress, remember, in 2018 had a 39% vote share. Sea voters projecting at this moment that the Congress's vote share could go up to 42. That's the October projection. When this poll was done in July by the same polling agency, the Congress's vote share was at 41. So that's a 1% gain in vote share between July and October. The BJP in 2018 had a 39% vote share. So they had roughly the same amount of votes as the Congress, except their votes were concentrated. Uh, the Congress's votes was more, were more diffused and therefore their seat conversion ratio was better. Uh, the projection in July by C Voter that was that the BJP would end up at 46% vote share. Uh, now the projection is 47. So the BJP's vote share projection has also gone up by one. How does this translate into seats? So coming up on your screen now, the C Voter projection for Rajasthan there are 200 assembly seats in the state of Rajasthan. The sea voters projecting in October, the Congress's vote share, which was 100 in 2018, uh, came down to 83 in July, has crashed further to 64 in October. So from 100 in the last elections to 64 now, between July and October, 
20 seats down. So the Congress in Rajasthan seems to be on a downward slope month on month. That's the image that emerges from this sea voter tracker. The BJP, on the other hand, was at 73 in the last elections. That went up to 114. Now projected to go up to a whopping 132. That's up 59 seats from the last elections. And on that note, let me get in uh, Yashwan Deshmukh for his uh, first thoughts on the poll for Rajasthan, which seems to suggest the Congress is getting weaker, the BJP getting stronger, and it seems that Ashok Gehloth, the magician, will live up to his track record, according to your data, of taking the Congress from the high of a victory in one election to a terrible low in the next. And also for 30 years, Rajasthan has had this same formula of voting out governments after five years. That seems likely to get repeated. Yashwan. Uh, well, Rahul, <clears throat> one interesting thing that our tracker is pointing out, which we are routinely doing for PSC and the ABP, uh, is like the bipolarization of these states is getting more and more acute by the day. Mm. Even though Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh have been long known for a bipolar state between BJP and the Congress, but there was always like every fourth voter in these states was going between 20%, 25% up to the of them were going to others. These others included the BSP and the very of the small local parties. But can I chip in to make the point that one of the reasons why you're picking up only 10% vote for the others and it was 18% in 2018 is also because candidates haven't been declared so you don't know how many rebels are standing and typically if there are powerful rebels then the number of people in your poll who will say they are voting for those independent <clears throat> candidates might be much higher because remember Ashok Gehloth last time because he didn't get his sway in ticket allocation put up some of his own rebels uh, which didn't get captured in an opinion poll but would only be known in a post poll or true. very close to the actual polling. Yashwad. That's true. That's true. So far, so far, it's uh, really working out like that. Uh, uh, maybe the other votes might increase as and when the uh, the play of the rebel candidates get into action. And uh, it will be interesting to see if that happens, then those rebels are eating up to from which actual which pie actually in that way. But by and large, as far as Rajasthan is concerned, Rahul, it looks like a routine anti-incumbent verdict. Uh, and I... I don't really have to uh, work at really hard to explain that, honestly, because apart from what data is showing, it's very uh, easy for me as from putting my journalist cap and understand that in the last four and a half years, there was hardly a positive headline, uh, you know, making to center stage from Rajasthan. Rajasthan no, but one of the things was... that Yashwan's data doesn't capture, Jivil Narsimha Rao, is the subterranean damage some of your stalwart netas could do, for example, a Vasundra Raji hasn't been projected this time. If she doesn't give it her all and she skipped some of the Parivartan Yatras and her supporters uh, you know, just pull their hands and don't, uh, don't fight as hard as they could, the data may not capture it, but andari andar, as was the case with Yadurappa in Karnataka, you may discover later that the situation is tougher than you would have initially imagined. So that's one of the risks the BJP runs. Uh, not really, Rahul, because uh, uh, such calculations were made even in the last assembly elections and uh, uh, and uh, qu qu quite uh, uh, contrary to the projections in 2018, the BJP barely, I think the Congress barely made it to the government. They did not even secure a majority. They were able to, they thought of a massive anti-incumbency against uh, Vasundara Raja government. It was calculated that the BJP was a completely divided house. Uh, there was no clear projection on the leadership. Despite all this, Congress could not even get a majority in the last election. So therefore, while we have several important leaders in the state, and they all may have their own, uh, they're, they're, they have their own stature, but it only adds to the BJP's strength. It does not in any way work against our, our electoral prospects. So 130 is quite a, 134 is a very realistic number according to me. And we could even surpass that because even when we won in 2013, we won a very, we, we had won a landslide mandate. Okay. This could even turn out to be a landslide. You know, that's what's happened in the past. When Gehloth became chief minister in 1998, the Congress had about 45% of the vote share. 
in five years, Congress's vote share crashed 36%. That's a 9% loss. Their seat share fell from 153 to 56. That's a 100 seat, virtually 100 seat loss in seat share. In uh, 2008, when he became chief minister, the Congress had 96 seats. Five years later, the Congress's seat share in 2013 was down to 21. So this has been Amitabh Tiwari, the track record of the magician in Rajasthan. After winning, somehow it's not like the, the BJP lost last time, but they weren't routed. They were at 73, which is bad, but not pathetic. Gehlot's track record typically has been that after five years in power, the Congress on his watch gets routed. Yeah, so when uh, BJP wins, it wins big. And when Congress loses, it loses uh, badly. And when it has been winning in the past 2008 and 2018, it has not been evil, able to score the simple majority mark. So what happens is that Ashok Gehlot has an image of a status quoist. If you talk to the people there, what happens generally is that Ashok Gehlot comes into action or gets into action only in the last year of elections. And that has an impact on the overall performance of the Congress. In, the, in this term, what many Congress supporters also believe is that Ashok Gehlot has been largely for the first four years trying to settle the factionalism with Sachin Pilot. So he has been caught up in factionalism trying to save his chair rather than administrative issues. And that is why perhaps this time we are seeing the trend and, and the same trend has been observed in the past as well. Let Nasir Hussain, let Nasir Hussain of the Congress respond to this. Dr. Hussain, the fact is the first four years were largely about Gehloth and Pilot being at loggerheads, brutally, visibly, publicly unabashed. Now he's trying through freebies, welfareism to try and recover lost ground, but Yashwan's, da Yashwan's data would seem to suggest that the gap is now too yawning for it to be bridged, no matter how many freebies uh, Chief Minister Gehloth offers to the voters in Rajasthan. <laughs> Rahul, I think uh, uh, Ashok Gehloth government for the past five years has been a pro-people's government. The kind of schemes and the kind of programs that he has given to the people of uh, Rajasthan is, uh, is, is something that has not been seen in uh, many of uh, many other states in our country, a right to health, uh, in which uh, you have a right not uh, right not to be denied treatment. I think this is first of its kind in the country. The Chiranjeevi Yojana, 25 lakh cashless health insurance, Indira Gandhi urban employment scheme. Again, in the urban areas, we had spoken about Mandrega, but for the rural areas, but then urban employment scheme. Then uh, first state to re uh, re implement the old pension scheme. Uh, 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 for which he has, I think, almost spent about 12,000 crores. Free electricity, up to 100 units. So they are marvelous schemes for the welfare of the poor of uh, So Rajasthan, what you are saying, with respect, Dr. Hussain, very innovative, very seems to be divorced from the data. This show is about the, the data. What you are saying is not getting captured in the data. How do you explain the sea water data, which suggests that the Congress is not just on its way out, no, no. It's losing no. steam. The BJP campaign in Rajasthan is gaining steam. Let's stick to the data on the political stock exchange. See, see, I see. I would not like to get into the data that is being provided by uh, Sea Water. What I have seen, the uh, what have, we have been engaging here from a uh, from the from Delhi and. Uh, uh, to the people down who are working there in Rajasthan, we have visited Rajasthan on a number of occasions. I think we are comfortably placed. We will form the government, and this will be uh, after so many years. I think this will be for the first time that the government will get repeated. Okay, there. And you're, you're, sure you're hopeful the that the Congress that will come back to power. With the people, Yashwan Deshmukh, can something Rajasthan. change? The, now, yeah, if I look at your tracker, that are coming, okay. Okay, Yashwan Deshmukh, if I see your tracker, momentum seems to be building in favor of the BJP and away from the Congress in Rajasthan. We'll come to the other states in a moment. Between now and polling day, is there something that can potentially change? How do you read it? What are the X factors? Well, even though, Rahul, it is said that a week is a long time in politics, uh, as far as our profession goes, we have seen some of the drastic ups and downs during a timeline, but those kind of drastic ups and downs happen only when really drastic things happen on the ground. 
uh, you know, public perception. Otherwise, we never track it because we do it on a daily basis. By and large, in the last four and a half, half years, I have seen uh, Congress uh, numbers in Rajasthan have uh, only tanking down and, you know, then remaining there. So, uh, what I'm uh, what I'm simply humbly trying to say is that unless something really big happens on the ground, for example, and I, I can I can say what can work for the Congress. For example, if there is an open rebellion by Vasudhara Raje and she starts putting up candidates all across the state, now that kind of thing happens, uh, which is a black swan event. But she hasn't rebelled so far. Event. She's expressing her displeasure. But she hasn't openly rebelled, and there's no I'm indication that she intends it's to do so. And remember, different. just bear in mind as you look at how unhappy Vasundra Raje is and her supporters are, keep in mind that the campaign is now started. Polling is just a few weeks away. So, Yashwat, she's left with very little time now to actually be able to rebel, form her exactly. own party, place her own candidates. She's now run out of time. Exactly my point. Exactly my point. And also, Rahul, please keep in mind. BJP in Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh or Chhattisgarh is not because of their chief ministerial candidate. BJP in these states is largely because of their organizational strength and capacity. So even though we have seen when when you remember uh, uh, somebody like uh, Uma Bharti rebelled against the BJP or somebody uh, like Mr. Kalyan Singh rebelled against the BJP, they did manage to disturb the party. They did manage to damage the party in a short-term basis. But in a long-term basis, it was the organization and the strength of the party which persisted over there. So, yes, the Black Swan event could be only an, only an open rebellion okay. by... That's Vasundra a very good Raja. point Otherwise, by Ashwan Deshmukh. That if Vasundra decides to walk away, then there is fluidity. Otherwise, the trend line seems set. The BJP is on the ascendant. The Congress in Rajasthan seems to be on its way out. That trend can't change unless now there is a black swan X factor type event. So with that said, from Rajasthan, let's move to Madhya Pradesh, which to my mind is really the most exciting election of the current lot of pole bound states. And the reason I say that is because the BJP is going all out, fielding ministers, MPs, trying to counter the anti-incumbency that seems to have set in against the government. Uh, the Congress, on the other hand, is hoping to play the sympathy card. Kamal Nath saying he was denied unfairly, hoping to encash the anti-incumbency and deliver this time a full mandate. What does the sea voter data for Madhya Pradesh say? So first. Uh, the sample size is 38,343. Uh, the poll was done between the 1st of September and the 8th of October. It's covered all the 230 Vidhan Sabha seats of Madhya Pradesh. Let me show you the projected vote share for this very crucial, supremely exciting battleground state. Here it is on your screen right now. In 2018, the Congress had 41% vote share, which is roughly also the vote share of the BJP. So they were neck and neck in terms of vote share. And remember, because the BJP wins in urban pockets with bigger margins, therefore, uh, the BJP has more votes, but their seat conversion ratio isn't quite as good because they're winning with bigger margins in urban and semi-urban pockets. Uh, the Congress's vote share in June was projected by Seawater at uh, 44%. They're now projecting that that could go up to 45 So a uh, 3% increase, 4% increase from 2018. The BJP, which was at 41 again projected to go up to 45 That's a 4% increase. Others were at 18 That's at 10 But remember, as I said in the first part, you really know the vote for others only after the candidates have been declared. Once you know how many rebel candidates are standing, how many of them are strong rebel candidates, then the others figure tends to change. Let's take a look at how the C voter vote share projections convert into seats. On your screen right now, for Madhya Pradesh, and I said this earlier, this is the most exciting election because really what C voter is saying at this moment is that it's anybody's game. The Congress has the lead, 119. Remember, 230 is the size of the assembly, so you need 116 to form the government. 
सी वोटर प्रोजेक्ट्स द कांग्रेस कूड एंड अप एट अबाउट 119, द बीजेपी एट 110 अदर्स एट वन सो वेरी वेरी डेलिकेटली पॉइज द मध्य प्रदेश इलेक्शन नाउ यू नो सो दैट टू थिंग्स दैट हैपन फर्स्ट द कांग्रेस सीम टू हैव क्वाइट अ बिग लीड अबाउट सिक्स एट मंथ्स गो द कांग्रेस सीम टू बी क्वाइट डेफिनेटली इन द लीड इन मध्य प्रदेश then uh, shivraj singh chauhan came up with the ladli behna yojana so month after month 1000 rupees started going into the bank accounts of women this seemed to shore up the fortunes of the bjp which pulled back on some of the lead the congress had and it brought the election very very close then shivraj singh chauhan seemed to have been unsettled by the central leadership of the bharatiya janata party Uh, he wasn't sometimes allowed to speak. It seemed to voters in Madhya Pradesh that he wasn't projected well, and he became unsettled, unsure. It wasn't even known till very recently whether he'd actually contest. Uh, he himself was asking voters in Budhni, should he contest? So all of that together then created some uncertainty in the minds of the supporters of Shivraj Singh Chauhan, and he's been chief minister for 16 plus years. So there is a Shivraj constituency in Madhya Pradesh. There's a BJP constituency. There's a massive Modi constituency, but there is a Shivraj constituency as well. Now this poll uh, suggests that the Congress has an edge. The BJP, though not uh, very far away, Yashwant Deshmukh. This is very delicately poised, like last time. At this moment, Madhya Pradesh really a cephalogist nightmare. you could run the numbers different ways and come up with different conclusions you've worked the maths in a way that you think the congress at this moment has a reasonable edge but not a comfortable edge well rahul the, uh, the you are right and the reason behind that is madhya pradesh is not really voting or uh, thinking like one one single state right now there are six regions of madhya pradesh and all of them are throwing up different directions you know there are two regions of bhopal and marwa where bjp has significantly big lead right now and there are two regions of bagelkhand and bundelkhand where congress has significant lead while mahakoshal and nimar are going down the edge so basically if you want to look into the picture basically it looks like uh, mahakoshal and nimar the contest over there is going to finally decide who is getting the final edge however having said that Uh, it becomes very interesting in psychology rahul when a ruling party actually ends up gaining vote and you are trying to explain that it is an anti incumbency sentiment so it is very perplexing it is very very confusing uh, of sorts what i think uh, you know is that more than anti incumbency it's probably is the fatigue that is going on in mp vote and it's not just fatigue i mean it's easy to pinpoint uh, a chief minister chief minister i can't pinpoint because he is popular he is not unpopular as such so uh, there is a fatigue at large probably with the uh, governance fatigue at large with the sitting mlas long term big number of them who have been in multiple terms probably so that is the question and also one very final detail rahul i genuinely believe that people do not like when the mandate is disrespected you know people do not like when there is a tod fod done to make a sarkar or topple a sarkar and made another thing so if the bjp probably would have let kamal nath continue as the chief minister and four years down the line right now bjp would have been looking at the numbers what numbers rajasthan is kind of showing in terms of momentum okay uh, let gvl narsimha rao respond to that because you make an important point that because kamal nath was denied and is going to voters saying he was cheated it creates a bit of a sympathy factor because jyotiraditya sindhya switched over you're having issues in alignment between narendra singh tomar the existing uh, bjp cadre in gwalior chambal then you got jyotiraditya sindhya supporters and while they're trying to get together it's an unhealthy it's an unhappy marriage and the sympathy factor and the fact that shivraj singh chauhan has been in power for 16 plus years and the fact that he's now been unsettled so you basically got a batsman who's taken guard who's batting but he doesn't seem sure of himself and therefore can't go out and play with the kind of freedom that you need to win the world cup jvl <laughs> rahul you see uh, uh, let me put it the other way round he has been uh, bjp has been in power from 2023 20 20 years 
except for the uh, for the year uh, of Kamal Nath's tenure. And uh, it's not as if Kamal Nath had got a mandate and and uh, B BJP had got this uh, government through any uh, uh, any back door. Kamal Nath didn't get a mandate. The last election through a hung assembly in Madhya Pradesh, he was shorter by two seats. We were shorter by maybe five, six, seven seats. So that and then in terms of popular vote, the BJP had got slightly even more votes than what the Congress had got. So therefore, there was no moral victory for the Congress party in the last election. And for the BJP to... to, no, to but to, you're giving to, a rhetorical response to an empirical question. The fact that anti-incumbency has built up, Yashwan's point that if you'd let the Kamal Nath government run, by now, anti-incumbency no, would have been against Kamal Nath and you'd have probably won handsomely in Madhya Pradesh. Even today, we are polling 45%. According to Yashwan's poll, the BJP is sitting on a 45% vote share, which is by itself is spectacular for a party which has been in government for nearly 20 years. It's a, it's a spectacular but, but can performance. I say and I'm sure we The arithmetic, and you know this well, say that 45% of the Congress vote share is worth more than 45% of the BJP's vote share only because the BJP tends to get more votes uh, in urban areas and you, win with big, and, and you win with bigger margins. Therefore, even if it seems that you've got more vote share, unless it is uh, spread out across the state, it doesn't help your seat conversion. So therefore, 45 for Congress is worth more than 45 for the BJP and that's just no, the arithmetic I, reality. No, Rahul, the point I'm making is if there was a sympathy that Yashwant is talking about, the numbers would have been vastly different. But the fact that the, that the BJP is... Uh, all, uh, even uh, keel with the Congress in your poll, but going forward, certainly in the campaign, we will pick up. That's the reason why we fielded a number of heavyweights in the election. They will not only win their seats, they will have a massive influence on the entire region where they are contesting. So certainly our numbers, our vote share will see a big improvement as a result of our election. Okay, Amitabh Tiwari, it comes down to that. All these uh, central ministers, MPs who are being made to contest whether they act as force multipliers as the BJP would like to believe or they end up breaking each other's heads and there is extra competition because everybody is uh, unsettled. Which one is it? The likes of Kailash Vijayvargiya said publicly, I don't know you know, he's saying that publicly that creates its own confusion. Shivraj Singh Chauhan being unsettled creates its own confusion. Though the flip side could be you make everyone fight, they all go out and give it their best shot. Narendra Singh Tomar wants to prove he's worthy of being Chief Minister. Kailash Vijayvargiya wants to prove he's worthy of being Chief Minister. Shivrat Singh Chauhan obviously wants to be Chief Minister and therefore the BJP is more energized than it would otherwise be. Yeah, so this is what the BJP hopes that these leaders, that the tall words, the tall words would win their seats and also impact the surrounding seats and win the maximum seats in their regions and then and uh, get the BJP uh, past the halfway mark and then post the polls, the BJP would decide who would be the chief ministerial candidate. However, what it also, in optics terms, what it also shows is that the BJP is not confident of its leadership, which is the state leadership. Then how can the voter uh, 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 give confidence to the state leadership or the Shivraj Singh Chauhan government? And also the fact that the BJP is pushing central ministers to the fight, shows that it is not very confident of victory in the regions where Jyoti Raditya Sindhya came and helped the BJP form the government. Because if you see the regional breakup, BJP is still lagging significantly in the Chambal area, whereas the Congress is making significant gains in the Bagel Khand, which is the Bundel Khand plus the Vindh region. And if you see, as you said, that the others are getting squeezed out and the others have a vote share of, which was around 18%, now have a vote share of only 10%. The Congress is largely gaining at the expense of the BSP and others in Chambal and Bagel Khan regions. However, when the candidates are announced, see 80% of the votes which BSP got in 2018 was from these two regions alone and 70% of the votes which others got was from these two regions. So when candidates are announced, rebels are announced, the advantage which Congress has, because it is seen absorbing the vote share of the others, might get lost because the 
Congress is largely gaining only in these two regions, whereas the okay. BJP, compared to 2018, is gaining in the rest of the four regions. You know, if I go, uh, Dr. Nasir Hussain, region by region, in Baghel Khand, uh, the Congress seems to have a substantial lead over the BJP. 37 seats projected for the Congress versus 19 for the BJP. Last time it was virtually the opposite. So in Baghel Khand, the Congress is doing very well. In Bhopal, the BJP is sweeping. 20 projected seats for the BJP, 5 for the Congress. So a massive disproportionate edge to the Bharatiya Janata Party in Bhopal. In Chambal, Gwalia, which is where Jyotiradya Sindhya and Narendra Singh Tomar come from, the Congress at 28, the BJP only at 6. If this is true, then it's a real weak spot for the BJP, which despite importing uh, leaders from the Congress, seems to be, at least according to this sea water projection, uh, weak in the Chambal belt. In Mahakaushal, uh, you've got a much tighter fight. 23 seats projected for the Congress versus 19 for the BJP. The vote share 45 for the Congress, 44 for the BJP. So a very tight fight in Mahakaushal. In Malwa, it's the BJP that is sweeping. 32 leads projected for the BJP versus 12 for the Congress out of the 45 seats of Malwa. And then Nimar, where it's 14, 14 for the BJP and for the Congress, 45% vote share for both parties. So it essentially, even if the margins change on the margins in four regions, it essentially comes down to the Mahakaushal belt and to Nimar. So it's not one state election, it's six different elections playing out together. And typically, the BJP would like to believe, Dr. Hussain, that when there is a seat-by-seat, region-by-region battle, because they have a stronger organizational base, because this is where the Jansang traditionally came from, therefore, their stronger election machine will give them the advantage on polling day, Dr. Hussain. Uh, Rahul, uh, BJP did have a stronger uh, organization base during the last election also. But the people of Madhya Pradesh had voted Congress and they wanted to keep BJP out after 15 long years. Uh, but then uh, what BJP did in uh, Madhya Pradesh, everyone knows. I agree with Mr. Deshmukh that uh, uh, people generally don't like toppling of governments, destabilizing of government and breaking of parties. This I would I would say because I come from a state from the state of Karnataka. I have seen how the government was toppled there. How uh, CBI you know, ED but that, was used that again is a rhetorical point. I, no, one second, Dr. Nasir Hussain. The, uh, the government was Congress. Just, just, hold on, just, 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 just hold allow me to allow. allow me, no, me, just, me, just, me, just one second, one second, one second. Dr. Hussain, one second. The Congress MLAs broke away in Uttarakhand, the yeah. BJP came to power. Congress MLAs went away in Arunachal Pradesh, the BJP came to power. So that's not entirely empirically true. You could lose your MLAs and the ch this dynamics change in the state and the BJP could still win. It's happened in Uttarakhand and in, uh, in Arunachal. No, no, I'll see. I, see, I, I, see, it, it uh, definitely... Uh, differs from state to state, but I've seen in the state of Karnataka how they are destabilized and what was uh, their position in the last election, how how Congress swept. According to our in-house reports, Madhya Pradesh, I think our our tally, our number will be something like 145 to 150 in Madhya Pradesh. That is our in-house assessment, and 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 uh, it is 20 years anti-incumbency is there. Our uh, organization is very strong. We have been uh, taking up issues against the government. We have been fighting there on the ground. We have done our homework very well. We have done our surveys there. Both uh, people ditching from Congress party will be taught a lesson by the people of Madhya Pradesh. And also for destabilizing a government, people will teach them a, uh, teach them two, a lesson. Two points, the Shivyal of, uh, One, the you imported all these the leaders from the Congress. Yet in Gwalior Chambal, the data suggests not just are you trailing, but trailing by a long margin. Uh, secondly, the point that was being made about your seat share choices, your candidate choices, betraying anxiety. Not You don't like your current team, which is why you want to change your team. If you liked your current team, you thought they could win, you wouldn't need to make so many last-minute shuffles in your batting order. You're having to bring in new heavyweight batsmen from the centre because your state batsmen aren't good enough. Hey, Ra Rahul, what matters, uh, whether in cricket or in elections, is to win. What matters is to win uh, win big. I think, obviously, as a party that that uh, that is determined to win this election, 
uh, we will use all the resources in our command. We'll use the best of our talent. We will pull, because in, in uh, Lok Sabha elections, Prime Minister Modi's image alone can really take the, uh, uh, take the uh, victory uh, for granted. Certainly, we will need to use all our uh, regional resources, uh, uh, a strong lead, regional leaders. We need to leverage their, uh, uh, their popularity, their strength for electoral strength for winning elections in the states. Because each of these big wigs, they, they, they will be a factor in Lok Sabha polls, but they will not be such a big factor as Prime Minister Modi's image overrides every other factor. So therefore, we want to leverage their popularity, their ground strength, their electoral appeal for winning big for okay. the status. GVL Narsimha Rao basically playing on the sentiment in the BJP cadre that in a Lok Sabha election, even if a lamppost contests on the lotus symbol is likely to I win. I didn't say that. I didn't, I, no, no, no. I, I, I'm, I'm saying that's the simple, that's the fact, that, that's the, that's the general thinking in the BJP that because Prime Minister Modi is so strong and so popular, therefore anybody will win, it doesn't matter. And if you're a local leader, prove whether it's in Indore or it's in Gwalior Chambal, prove what you're worth. That's the point that you're making, which is fine. Uh, Narsi uh, Hussain respond to what GVL is saying, that they are bringing out all the batsmen. They have the batsmen, they're bringing them out to bat. If you had batsmen, aap bhi khilalo. He's saying, I, we are, we are, ultimately it matters whether you win the World Cup or not. They're making whoever they have bet. See, see, that is, see, that is what I am saying. See, ultimately in an election, every party will try and put up the best resources, best candidates, uh, best speakers, uh, best electioneering and all those things. I, 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 uh, I don't have a problem with that. But the, but the, but the whole problem is, it is not me. You, the other panelists also are, ask, um, uh, are, are questioning and saying, see, the lack of confidence in the present team, in the present leadership in Madhya Pradesh, anti-incumbency against the present government is something what they are trying to deal with. How are they dealing? They are trying to deal by bringing Lok Sabha members, by bringing Raj Sabha members, by bringing union ministers, asking them to contest their campaign there, stay put there. So that means, that means this government has not delivered. There is no confidence uh, 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 in, the, in the leadership of the state. That is why they are doing it. There they, they, is where the Congress uh, has a chance and that's what Congress is not only hoping is uh, is building upon it Okay, anyway both parties will go with the narrative that they will it's for the voters of Madhya Pradesh to choose Which narrative they prefer after Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh. I now want to come to Chhattisgarh In Chhattisgarh the tracking data has so far suggested the Congress was comfortably placed in Bhupesh Baghel seemed set for a second term does the situation still seem the same or are the dynamics changing? Sea voter sample 7,652. Uh, respondents across the 90 assembly seats of uh, Chhattisgarh between the 1st of September and the 8th of October. Let's take you through the vote share projections first. So coming up on your screen now, the vote share projections for Chhattisgarh. Remember the Congress had 43% of the vote share in uh, Chhattisgarh in 2018. When Sea voter last polled in August 2023, the Congress's vote share was at 46. At 46%, the Congress seemed very comfortably placed. In October, the Congress's vote share has now come down to 45. That's 1% less than what they picked up in the last poll. The BJP, which was which had crashed to 33, went up to 41 in the last poll in August. That vote share now projected at 44, which is 11% more than the last assembly elections. The Congress still has the edge, but it doesn't have as big an edge as it did a few months ago, which suggests that the BJP is gaining some ground. It hasn't gained enough ground to land a knockout blow, but they've gained enough ground to make this a very exciting election. So between now and the 7th of November, there will be a lot of Mirch Masala in the battlefield of Chhattisgarh because this election is getting close. Both parties think they have a chance to win. Let's take a look at how this vote share projection converts into seats across the 90 assembly seats of Chhattisgarh. See voters projecting at this time that the Congress's vote share, which was 68 in the last elections, 
uh, this time is likely to be 48. Remember, you need 46 plus to form the government. So 48 means you're still across the finishing mark, but you're very close to the finishing mark. And when you're close to the finishing mark, that's not a comfortable position for the Congress. The Congress wants to win like they won in Karnataka, where you're comfortably placed and the BJP is far behind and therefore there's nothing they can do uh, because you've won a big mandate. 48, when you need 46, is just very tight because the BJP is projected to go up from 15 to 42. That's a gain of 27 seats between 2018 and now. So 42 for the BJP, 48 for the Congress means Chhattisgarh is now tighter than it was a few months ago. Yashwan Deshmukh, um, why is it that you think that the BJP has recovered some ground? And do you think this is just the amount of recovery that is likely? Or are you suggesting, or are you picking up momentum shifting in Chhattisgarh from advantage BJP to now this being neck and neck? There are a few pointers. Again, as I said, that uh, party in power increasing the vote share from the previous election, that is something which is interesting for me to observe. But as you mentioned, it is only the starting point. As we know, more rebel candidate, other candidates, they point in. That is when we know where this dust settles down and eventually what is the vote share that we are looking at. However, one thing is clear. Actually, two things are clear. Uh, Chief Minister Baghel is extremely popular. In fact, in our MOTN poll for the India Today, we know that he was at rank number two right before Na below Navin Babu in that way. So there is no anger against the Chief Minister. However, be, just by uh, virtue of, you know, Congress actually in five years back got disproportionately large number of seats in, in, in Chhattisgarh. Nobody expected them to pick up those many seats. That also got in a problem of huge number of non-performing MNAs. So that anti-incumbency at a micro level is something which the Congress needs to be extremely cautious about. Now we need to see that on the cricket distribution side how many candidates actually non-performing non MLAs that they can actually drop, how many new faces they can give so that this anti-incumbency at the micro level can be countered. On the other hand, BJP has finally cleared the ticket of Dr. Raman Singh. You know, even without projecting his name, his name was consistently coming up as the only BJP leader, uh, which in the verbatim top of the mind record, people were naming as the prime minister, uh, as the chief ministerial choice from the BJP's camp. So now that he has been given a ticket, will that consolidate BJP's votes further? That remains to be seen. However, no, but you know Chattis what's happened in the last five years is that uh, Bhupesh Baghel has been playing the Chhattisgarhia Vad card. Remember, Chhattisgarh was largely a tribal state. It didn't have a sub-regional identity of its own, like a Tamil Nadu, for example, does, or even a Karnataka. He's tried to build that out. And therefore, Dr. Raman Singh, because he comes from the upper caste, and that's just about 5 or 6% of the voters in Chhattisgarh, he is arithmetically disadvantaged. Therefore, the BJP is trying to bring up a new crop of leadership in the form of an Arun Sahu or an OP Chaudhary who come from uh, the Sahu, the Satnamis or the OBC community to try and build up a non-upper caste face. But then the big risk there, GVL, is that it's happening too late in the day. You can say, okay, this guy is now an Arab stallion, he'll run and he'll win the derby. But the voters don't really have that kind of an affection with that leader. So some of this new leadership that you're building is happening late in the day. Your new leaders don't have the kind of recall. And the ones that do, don't have the kind of projection that may be required for them to be confidently projected to be the next chief minister. No, Rahul, <clears throat> even without any such projection, your poll itself is showing a massive uh, vote shift in, uh, in Chhattisgarh compared to last election. So it's always not necessarily a leadership that results in a vote gain or a vote loss, but the mal malgovernance in Chhattisgarh itself. Is this is a huge anti-incumbency that is evident in your poll. And when people decide to vote out a government, then nothing else matters. I think it will be, I see this really going all the way towards the BJP because again, from third, we had a 10%, we were, we lagged behind by 10 percentage points in the last election with 33% vote against Congress's 43. And today, if we have closed that gap significantly, it, it clearly shows there is a massive 
anger against the state government while the pr exercise of chatisgarh government might might have given baghel a big name in the, in the national level at a time when congress was uh, were, had no governments at the, in, in any state in the country but the reality is on the ground there is a severe unhappiness Na about nasir hussain is government. this data alarming from a congress's perspective you are still projected to form the government but the momentum seems to be shifting and often like the victorious australian team of the past the west indies team of the 70s and the 80s if the bjp sends an opportunity they can often go in for the kill the congress needs a healthy margin the bjp can find some way of making a tight fight turn into a victory are you concerned about bjp gaining some momentum even though you seem to be in the lead at the moment Raul, I, 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 I agree with you that Congress should uh, win with uh, huge margins. They should win with a large number of seats. And this is what we have been telling the people across the country. Don't give us a simple majority. Please give us an absolute majority. Otherwise, BJP will break governments, will see to it that the governments are stabilized, will see to it that there is horse trading, will buy uh mls will use ed it and cbi this is what we have been seeing uh, saying we said this in karnataka we won with a huge margin and we are winning chatisgarh in a huge uh, with a huge morning uh, uh, margins and and again again uh, what you try to explain in madhya pradesh i think bjp has a similar problem here the percentage of votes which they are getting here and i think they will be getting these numbers slightly from urban area no, no, but it's very different no 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 I'll explain whoa, whoa, the difference whoa. between Chhattisgarh and the other states in a moment, but you farmers. complete your point. Go on, Nasir. Twenty lakh farmers, Tendu Bata and Forest Produce Procurement. Now see, see all these schemes: Raju, uh, Raju Gandhi Kisan Yojana, World Pension Scheme, Godan Yojana, Loan Waiver for Farmers, uh, about for twenty lakh farmers. Twenty-five lakh getting uh, benefited from twenty-five lakh farmers getting benefited from Raju Gandhi Kisan Yojana, uh, World Pension Scheme, Godan Yojana. and then tendu patta and forest produce procurement see all you these schemes uh, are largely targeted and directed towards the rural chatisgarh and that is the area from which i think large number of congress seats will come they may okay. be five five here and five there's five seats down or five seats up but we are definitely going to form the chatisgarh government there's no anti incumbency against the government and the chief minister chief minister is hugely popular that is the reason why the central government was all out going trying to arrest ed <coughs> trying to make use of ed and arrest officers from the chief ministers residents officers from working with the chief minister to defame and depopularize to 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 okay. depopularize so can i can uh, i just make the there. point now that uh, chatisgarh is different from and rajasthan and madhya pradesh uh, because chatisgarh like. is a largely rural agrarian state Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan have more urban pockets than a uh, Chhattisgarh, and therefore, uh, what was said in the case of a Madhya Pradesh or a Rajasthan may not be true in the case of a Chhattisgarh, just because of the breakup of the seats of the state, far more agrarian, far more rural than a Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh. Amitabh Tiwari, there is some shift in momentum. the bjp is gaining some momentum the congress is losing some of its lead but the congress still in front in chatisgarh uh, 45 versus 44 is that enough you think to see them through uh, in the battle in november or should the congress really be concerned at this stage about what may happen in the next few weeks i think the congress should really be concerned because the, as you said the satisfaction levels with bagelas are fairly high but that is not the case with the local mlas and bjp realizes that the anti incumbency against the local mlas is high that's why it is going for a seat by seat contest not announcing a chief ministerial face and i beg to differ here from you that any seat by seat contest actually is very very difficult for any incumbent party to contest that's what we are seeing in rajasthan mp chatisgarh telangana mizoram Uh, also so what is happening also is the fact that the sc st community helped bjp helped the congress 
स्वीप 32 आउट ऑफ 39 सीट्स इन 2018 विधानसभा हाउएवर द टॉप टू पोजीशंस और द टॉप थ्री पोजीशंस इन द मिनिस्ट्री आर ऑक्यूपाइड बाय द अपर कास्ट एंड द ओबीसी सो द एससीएसटी रिप्रेजेंटेशन इन द कैबिनेट व्हिच बीजेपी वाज वंस अक्यूज्ड ऑफ इन छत्तीसगढ़ हैज नॉट हैपेंड इवन इन द कांग्रेस गवर्नमेंट एंड द बीजेपी हैज ट्राइड टू प्रोजेक्ट some st community leaders like uh, ms renuka and gomati bai etc so there is also what is happening is that with the weakening of the janata chatisgarh congress which had damaged bjp significantly bagging 8% vote share they are now almost vanished and that voter is coming back to the bjp reverting to not the not necessarily mean. not necessarily some of those because amit jogi and his mother i discredited some of those votes could go back to the congress because when i was in chatisgarh and i asked this question where does the jogi vote go because it's largely a satami tribal vote a lot of that could also go back to the congress so it's not as if that vote is necessarily coming to the bjp amitab yeah so that is what was actually believed in 2018 also that jcc will damage the congress but it actually damaged the bjp more so in the central region more so in the central region it bagged all its seats from there it did not win significant scst seats most of the seats it won were general category seats and with the weakening and that is what is being seen in the in the regional share also that bjp is gaining significantly in the central region and the x factor here could be the women voters who outnumber the men voters in chatisgarh the women voters outnumber the men and that where, where does be... the where does the jogi vote go yashwan deshmukh very quickly x factors what can change where does the jogi vote go well uh, he is right i mean i was absolutely right because last time the jogi votes actually damaged the bjp big time so much so that even in the strongest of the urban seats in central chatisgarh bjp had to face the music but this vote is actually largely going back to the bjp and also the fact that uh, uh, you know the anti incumbent vote of other parties might likely to polarize again so last election was kind of we we predicted that bjp is going to lose last election we predicted congress is winning but the extent of which the victory margins the extent of the number of seats that we congress got that even surprised the congress leaders themselves so that kind of extremity extreme verdict kind of thing that might be rationalized a lot however uh, for congress the biggest uh, strength remains the chief minister their chief minister while the bjp still has to okay. uh, you know uh, so here's what we get, wish to say its place in, order. in conclusion even if the congress wins it will be with a likely lesser margin than they did last time when the bjp just collapsed after three terms of being in power they just collapsed in chatisgarh that's unlikely to happen they're bouncing back the congress is coming down the congress though still has the lead can they hold on to that lead which is why this election is so exciting which is also why our coverage is so important because we give you the kind of insights you will not get on any other indian news channel uh for your data which help power this conversation yashwan deshmukh thank you very much amitab tiwari thank you for your insights jvl narsimha rao and nasir hussain for being rational and to the extent possible empirical in your responses i appreciate that thank you for joining us this was this week's edition of the political stock exchange i'll have more for you when we come back we're slipping into a break uh, of course the psc is something that we'll keep doing week on week as we try and capture the changing moods and the pulse of the indian voter thank you for tuning in more on the other side watching india today powered by finest be sustainable change a bnp group company colors by cola makes you wish everything was as vibrant
Colors by Cola makes you wish everything was as vibrant. by Cola makes you wish everything was as vibrant. You are watching India Today, powered by Finest, Be Sustainable Change, a BNP Group company. Colors by Cola makes you wish everything was as vibrant. by Cola makes you wish everything was as vibrant. by Cola makes you wish everything was as vibrant. You are watching India Today, powered by Finest, Be Sustainable Change, a BNP Group company. We've seen in Israel over the past 36 hours are truly horrifying. I want to express my absolute solidarity for the people of Israel. Now is not a time for equivocation, and I'm unequivocal. Hamas and the people who support Hamas are fully responsible for this appalling act of terror, for the murder of civilians and for the kidnapping of innocent people, including children. I've just spoken with Prime Minister Netanyahu to assure him of the UK's steadfast support as Israel defends itself against these appalling attacks. We will do everything that we can to help 
terrorism will not prevail. This is the worst attack on Israel since 1973, the Yom Kippur War, almost exactly 50 years ago. But there's a fundamental difference. That was a war uh, that was state to state, country to country, army to army. This is a massive terrorist attack that is gunning down Israeli civilians in their towns, in their homes, and as we've seen so graphically, literally dragging people across the, the border with Gaza, including a Holocaust survivor in a wheelchair, women and children. So you can imagine the impact this is having throughout Israel, and the world should be revolted at what it's seen.